continue what with what we have learned yesterday. So yesterday is just keep practicing on the um, uh, continuous random variable on um, expected values, variance, standard deviation, mode, and um, uh, what other one? Median and median. So today we just um, have two more examples left. I'll finish up those two and I'll start the last exercise. Okay, so revision, example nine. The length x. Okay, can you see in question, most of the time they will give you a random variable already. Like they give you something like it's x. They tell you what is the random variable. But in some case, the question will not specify what is the random variable. They just say, for example, oh, the length of something follow a density function, blah, 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 blah. And can you find the probability that the length will be in between 10 to 12, like something like that? There's no x mentioned in the question. So for that kind of question, you can't directly start with probability x greater or equals to 10 or 12. You need to first add, let the length be x, and then you start to use x as random variable. So you need to define the random variable. Okay, you need to see whether in the question you have that random variable or not. If not, you need to define for it. But in this question, it's easy. We have that. So it's a continuous random variable with that density function that's a quadratic. Okay, if you can see that, that's a quadratic. Have linear and linear. Have 12 to 13.5, which is the domain for the x, and 0 elsewhere. Uh, find the probability that a random chosen candle has a length. Okay, a random chosen um, candle has a length greater than 13, given that it's at least 12.5. So that's a given question. But what you know is probability greater than 13, given that x is at least, is x greater or equals to 12.5. So in this question, you know that it's a continuous random variable. Whether I have include 12.5 or not including 12.5 will be the same answer. But when you write the equation at the beginning, you need to write it correctly. For example, at least will be, it can equals to 12.5. So it's greater or equals to 12.5. Greater than 13 will be like larger than 13. So you need to set up that correctly, even though the answer will be the same, but your method might be wrong. So that's what we'll have first. And okay, that equals to, I'll write it vertically. That will be the intersection. So what's the intersection for x greater than 13 and x greater than 12.5? Well, greater than 13. So 12.5 is here, 13 is here. So they have common here as 12, uh, x greater than 13. And over the probability x greater equals to 12.5. So greater than 13, but the largest one is 13.5. So it's 13 to 13.5 fx dx over 12.5 to 13.5 fx dx. Okay, so you need to be careful with the largest value you can take. Sometimes people just like infinity and that's wrong. Okay, so it's 13 to 13.5 and 12.5 to 13.5. So let's define the function. 8 on 2 to 5 times x times 27 minus 2x. Control var, let's just keep this fx. And then is a fraction, shift up. I uh, have 13 to 13.5 of fx. Dx. And I have exactly the same thing. I have to copy that. Control C and control V and we will change that to 2.5 
Okay, so I'll just type that into a calculator and calculate uh, how many decimals I want. I didn't say. Let's go three decimals. Uh, let's go four. Two, 0 0.2565. <coughs> Two five six five. Okay, in B it says at most twelve point eight. So at most, so x needs to less than twelve point eight. Okay, uh, at equals to at most can equals to twelve point eight. Given that is less than. 13.2 What's the intersection here? Less than 12.8 Over probability x less than 13.2 So if it's less than, we need to care about the lower boundary which is 12 so it's 12 to 12.8 fx dx over 12 to 13.2 fx dx. Okay, and we find the value, so 13.2 and 12.8. Okay, that's a 12. That's a uh, twelve point eight. That's a twelve. That's a thirteen point two. Correct. Yep. Zero point eight zero seven three. So that's the probability. So what can be asked? For this type of question, it's only like that. That five thing: expected value, variance, mean, standard, uh, mean, standard deviation, variance, median, and mode. Five things plus the probability in between what to what, greater than what, less than what, given what. Okay, so that's the only question can be asked in this type of question. And another one will be sketch the probability density functions and label all the key features. Okay, so that's all what we can be asked in continuous random variable for this chapter. Uh, very similar thing here. Example 10. Uh, what I want to really emphasize is the part E here. Let's have a look about the question first. Example 10. A continuous random variable x has a probability density function defined by that. As I said, that's a special distribution. But this time, it doesn't really tell me what is the formula for mean. So I can't assume I know that. If you remember, that's 1 over a. Okay, it's 1 over a, but like, do not use it. You can check your answer by that. So 1 over a is 1 over 0.3, and that's a 10 on 3. So you should have expected value 10 on 3. But like, what, let's just have a look about this using the normal method to do it. So it's 0 to infinity x times 0.3 e negative 0.3 x dx. Um, okay, what I'll have is a point three, a negative point, uh, not negative point three. I need to use calculator to do that. I can't really do this by hand because there's an x times in the front. Um, zero to infinity. x times 0 0.3 times e negative 0 0.3 times x dx. Okay, 3, well, like, let, why you have 3.333 instead of exact value? Because you put 0 0.3 into your question. Okay, so to achieve a exact value, I need to change that to... 3 on 10 and change that to 3 on 10 and you have 10 on 3 here okay and you have 10 on 3 here so you need to keep 
seen in fraction form and you have exact values. So that's a 10 on 3. B is calculate median. So median will be 0.5 equals to 0 to the median and 0.3 e negative 0.3 x dx. You solve for that. There's no x times in the front. That's just calculate the area under the curve. Okay, area under the curve. That's 0.5 equals to. Okay, that's a neg. Well, I'm not going to solve it by hand. It's too hard. <laughs> Let's copy that down, and you won't have that. Oh, ah, oh, that's fine. Let's just do that again. Keep it exact. A half equals to. Integral 0 to a value a and then 0 0.3 times e to the power of negative 0 0.3 times x dx and comma a. Uh, I have point 0.3 again. I shouldn't have point 0.3. Three over ten. Okay, that's the answer. A is ten line two over three. Okay, so M is ten over three log E two. Okay, that's the median. If you keep the point 0.3 as like 3 on 10 and point 0.5 as a half, then you can have the exact value. Okay, then you can have the exact value. That's 10 over 3 log e2. Okay, you, you can try, your cal try to use your calculator. So for probability session, please bring your calculator every lesson. We will use calculator every lesson. There's no way to do that without your cast. Okay, you can only, like if without your cast, you can only write the first line and that's it. Okay, so if you have any questions about calculator while well, I'm doing it together, so you can ask me anytime. Okay, so you need to make sure how to do, like, do the question with calculator. Okay, that's B. C is the mode. Well, what is the mode? Do you remember what is the mode? Highest point. What do you think is the highest point in this question? Zero. It's a decreasing exponential function. Okay, like something like that. You have zero here and have closed circle here. That's asymptotes. Okay, so zero is the mode. Okay, zero is the mode. Okay, D is asking for standard deviation. Okay, asking for standard deviation. Uh, it's very long, like expression, but let's keep it short. That's e x squared minus e x uh, squared that will give me the variance okay that will give me the variance variance x is e x squared minus well mu is given so it's 10 over 3 squared um, that e x squared will equals to 0 to infinity x squared times 0.3 e negative 0.3 x dx. Okay, let's directly calculate what that equals to. Let's just copy that down and I will change that to infinity times 3. I need to times the x squared in the front. Okay, have a look. That's the expression for expected x squared, x squared times fx, 0 to infinity. I have 200 over 9. And let's minus 10 on 3 squared. 
that gives me 100 over 9. Okay, 100 over 9. EX squared is 200 over 9, and minus the mu squared is 100 over 9. So I have 100 over 9 here. So the SDX equals to square root of 100 on 9 equals to 10 on 3. And as you know, the expected value and the standard deviation are the same for this distribution. We have figured that out for the previous question. Okay, let's have a look at the last one. So I'm very interested in the last one. What the last one's talking about? The last one says, I want to find the probability that x is in between with mu within two standard deviation. Okay, mu minus two standard deviation and mu plus two standard deviation. Let's have a think, what is mu minus two standard deviation? Mu minus two standard deviation is 10 on three minus two times 10 on three. What that equals to? Minus 10 on three. And I have mu plus 2 sigma, which is 10 on 3 plus 2 times 10 on 3. What is that? What is that? 10. Okay, 10. Okay, so now I want to find the probability in between those two values. I want to find the probability x is in between that to 10. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. But you won't have negative, so you will start from 0 to 10. Okay, you will not have the negative. Well, after mu subtract to standard deviation, yes, is um, negative. But you won't have negative, you will have the positive. Start from 0. So it's the probability, say, from 0 to 10. Give me a guess what the probability will be. Okay, everyone, have a guess what this probability might be. That's a very special notation. Mu minus two standard deviation, mu plus two standard deviation. 0 0.95. Okay, everyone remember, 0 0.95. I'm not sure if it is or not. Yeah. And why is the, so the negative 10 over 3, why is that equal to x, the other side is it? Oh, it's equals. I just oh, forgot to write. <laughs> it is equals. Thank you. Um, zero, to, 0 to 10. So let's find that probability in this. Okay, I'm, I will choose this one. Copy that down. And I will change that to a 10. All right. Enter. Okay, that's the exact value. Okay, that's the exact value. Let's go control enter. That's very close to 0 0.95. Okay? It's very close to 0 0.95. It's not magic. I just something like when this is a special distribution. When it's not a special distribution, you're not going to have that good number. But when it becomes like a really good distribution, say that's follow the Poisson distribution, and you can find that in the calculator as well, then it will definitely follow the 0 0.95 rule. We'll very get very close to 0 0.95. So I would say that's copy the exact um, okay, e3 times e negative 3, that's a 1. So it's a 1 minus 1 over e to the power of 3. So this equals to 1 minus 1 over e to the power of 3 and almost be 0 0.95. Okay, it's almost 0 0.95. All right, that's the end of that exercise. And let's have a look at um, uh, exercise D. Let's have a look at exercise D. Okay, there's only one example, but like what I need to explain here is very, uh, well, it's not very important. So I just want you to understand why I'm doing that. But if you don't understand, just forget what I'm talking about and just remember the conclusion, okay? So what it's talking about here is, you have the top two formula. Can you see that? You have that two formula. Variance 
ax plus b is a squared varies x. Expected ax plus b equals to a expected x plus b. But like, do you know, um, when we talk about discrete probability, that's all fine. Because the probability to achieve x squared will be the same of the probability to achieve x. Like they share the same probability. But now it become a distribution function. Like all the x is on a function. You cannot really talk about single values. You always talk a period of time. So when I talk about the random rival x, and then you're talking about a new random rival ax plus b, there are two different random rivals. They are not going to use the same function. Okay? They are not going to use the same function because they're not going to look the same. Think about like think about the domain. Okay, let's just think about this. If my x is x and my ax plus b is just 2x plus 1. Think about that. If that is a domain from 0 to 1. 2x plus y is definitely not give you the same domain as that one, okay? It's not definitely not 0 to 1. Therefore, if they use the same function, have a think what will happen. Okay, originally, like originally, for example, from here to here, 0 to 1, that is an area of 1. Then that becomes 2 to 3. It's not going to have the area of 1, okay? It's not the same area we're talking about. So the function will definitely change. When your new random variable become 2x plus 1, the function will change together with that change. Okay, so how that, cha how that will change? Yeah, this is the very, very interesting part. How that will change? So, um, have a think. What you have is x. And ax plus b. Okay, you have x and ax plus b. So let's say we have a function fx. Let's say we have a function fx before. And then after the transfer, we'll have a new function fx dash. Okay, so what's the relationship between that x and that x dash? So have a think about this x and the ax plus b. Which one is the dash? Which one is the dash? That, that one is the dash. Okay, that one is the dash. So I have a dash here. So it's kind of transformation thing. That's the dash here. They are equivalent. Okay, they are the same kind of thing. They are equivalent. That become that, so they are equivalent. So have a think about what x dash becomes. x dash becomes x minus b over a. Okay, x minus b over a. Let's put a new dash into the original function. So that function becomes what? That function becomes f x minus b over a. That is the new point, subtract b and divide by a. That becomes the new function. Okay, you x dash is actually get that relationship with the original x. Okay, so it's kind of transformation. The function will not stay the same because the new point, if we compare the old point, that will be the transformation. Your function will change to that, but it doesn't finish. Because tell me, like that's x dash equals to one on a x minus b over a, right? So, Okay, let's just not have think about not think about that. Um, just have a think about, think about this. Just think about this purely. Compare this with fx. What's the dilation has been applied? What is the dilation? What's the dilation factor? It's a. It's not one over a. Compared to x, it's just purely a. Okay, purely a. So the thing for x, you need to flip it and say that's the dilation factor. That's a. So your graph, think about your graph, has been stretched which way? Think about the fx graph, stretch which way? From the, it's changing the x, right? It's delayed by a. So it's stretching this way. Do you think the area and the curve will change as well? Yes. It will get larger or smaller? Larger. Okay, for the same period of 
time, you get larger, you will get stretched this way. Okay, before, say for example, before, from one to four, you have area is just exactly one. Now your graph gets stretched. Do you think that area will still remain one? No. no. Okay, if not, I need to balance that back to make it back to one as well. So if now you stretch it this way by A, now what I want to do is compress from the top and make it shorter by A times and then balance that back. Okay, that's the logic. Because I stretch this way, now I want to put it back. So what I will have is, okay, now before I have F, X and put that into F X dash minus B over A and now I need to balance the shape back I need to times the 1 over A in the front as well why I need to put that in the front because I have stretched this wave by A times now I don't want that area to be that large I need to compress that back by A times to balance the area. Well, it's not that easy actually, but you just need to understand that much. Okay, because I get it stretched, so I need to compress that back. Yeah, I need to compress that back. So, this is the new function. So, originally, if we have, well, let's directly look at the example. Let's directly look at the example. So, let x be the random variable with that probability density function. Okay, with that probability density function. What I will have is, I want to know what's the expected 3x plus 1 and variance 3 plus 1. What's the expected value for that? So, let, I need to find expected x and variance x first, and then I can apply for the transformation. Now, I just have value x. So, I'm looking for expected x. Expected x equals to negative 1 to 1, uh, x times 3 over 2x squared, dx. That is times, that's 4, 3 on 8, x to the power 4, negative 1 to 1. So you put 1, that's 3 on 4. You put minus 1. That's still that. So expected value is just a 0. Okay, expected value is just a 0. So have a think about the shape of this graph. The shape of the graph is just like that. And okay, negative 1 is here. 1 is here. Okay? That's the area under the curve. It's just 1. So 0 will be the expected value. Um, and then I will have expected x squared. Okay, expected x squared is minus 1 to 1. x squared times 3 over 2 x squared dx. That's a 3 over 10. x to the power 5 minus 1 to 1. You put 1 in, that's 3 on 10. You put minus 1 in, that's minus 3 on 10. So that gives you 3 on 5. 3 on 5. So the variance will be 3 on 5 minus 0 squared. That gives 3 on 5. the question A. What is expected 3x plus 1 and variance 3x plus 1? So expected 3x plus 1 will be 3 expected x plus 1. That is just 1. And variance 3x plus 1. That equals to 9 variance of x. And that is 27 over 5. <coughs> OK, 
Okay, B is asking what's the expected value for one minus x? Well, that's a minus expected x plus one. That still gives one. And the variance minus x plus one, that will still be minus one squared variance of x. That is the same as variance of x. Okay, that's some revision stuff. Okay, they are all revisions for the first page. The important thing is exercise, uh, the question C. C is asking, what is the probability density function for the new 3x plus 1? Okay, for the new 3x plus 1. So x now becomes a 3x plus 1. Okay, x becomes a 3x plus 1. So, for example, if your x before, well, let's have a think. Your x is taking negative 1 to 1. What do you think now it takes from which to which? It just substitute in. It's 3x plus 1. So it put negative 1 in, it's negative 3 plus 1, it's negative 2. So that's negative 2 to 4. So now your new function will get a new domain from negative 4 to 4. So you just substitute the domain into that, and then you find where it will be. Okay, now the next thing is, I need to think about the function. That's 3x plus 1, right? 3x plus 1. So ax plus b. I will have 1 over a times f x minus that over 3. x minus b over a. Okay, that is the formula. So how x change to a linear ax plus b, the new function will become. That's just the rule. 1 over a, f, x minus b over a. Okay, so that's the rule. You just, well, don't really need to know the proof. No one asks you the proof. If you want to know the proof, the proof is just like you dilate that way by a. So it needs to compress that by a to balance the areas to still have a 1 of the area. So f, so what is f? f is 3 over 2x squared. 3 over 2 x so your x has become that and then squared that is a half okay a half and there there's a 9 as well it's 1 on 18 x minus 1 squared Just simplify that. So one nine outside, and that's one two times one nine is one eighteen, and x minus one squared. Um, well, what you need to write here? I'll just write this answer here. So what do you write? Like the new function for that will be one on eighteen x minus 1 squared from negative 4 to, to where? Uh, wait, negative 3, negative 2 to 4. Okay, and 0 elsewhere. Okay, so that will become your new function. That will become your new function. It will change from that to 1 on 18 x minus 1 squared from the domain will change as well because think about you want to stretch it the two endpoints will get stretched as well so it's getting actually larger okay with the domain and zero elsewhere so zero place doesn't matter how you stretch it it's still zero okay so it's only the endpoint will get stretched this way as well yeah, so for the whole exercise, the point is just exercise C. How do you write a new function for the new random variable? A linear transformation that applies a linear transformation. Any questions about this chapter? No? Okay, that's the end of this chapter then.